Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines had been dormant for 600 years. Even when it started rumbling in 1991, few had any idea how dangerous it was. Geologist Andy Lockhart was part of the team sent in to check it out. Pinatubo just didn't look like a volcano to anybody who wasn't a geologist. Now, as a geologist, you'd look at it and say, that's a very bad volcano. Because this volcano, when it erupts, this one just blows itself apart. So this is not a good place to be. Clark Air Force Base was situated at the foot of the volcano. It was home to 20,000 US military personnel and their families. Sergeant Larry Rogers was one of them. The volcanologist was saying that uh, there's some stuff on the ground that nobody really want to mess with. When the air base was evacuated on June 11th, Rogers and Lockhart were part of the skeleton crew left behind. One day later, Pinatubo blew its top. But this explosion was minor compared to what followed three days later. I went outside the hangar and uh, turned around and looked, and all of a sudden, it looked like, uh, I guess you would describe it as the mountain range exploding from left and right. This was the second biggest eruption of the 20th century. When a column goes up like that, and it hits the stratosphere, and you get this nuclear cloud thing, you get the mushroom cloud, it spreads out on the stratosphere. The ash cloud turned day into night. Well, it was just dark, dark, dead dark, dead, hard storm in the middle of the night, no lights at all, dark. It's a feeling you can't really describe when the sun, you can't see, you know you're supposed to have sunlight and everything is dark, and yet you're getting all this mud and stuff on you. I thought that uh, this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is the big one. At midday, it was more like midnight for miles around. Ash clouds from volcanic explosions can completely block out all daylight. But these terrifying phenomena can have far-reaching and more damaging effects. The ash from the cataclysmic eruption of Mount Pinatubo shot more than 20 miles into the stratosphere. In less than a month, it circled the globe. Eventually, ash particles drifted across the entire planet and reflected so much sunlight back into space, it lowered global temperatures for at least two years. In the Philippines, millions of tons of ash covered 300 square miles. In some places, it was 600 feet deep. Everything was gray. Everything was monochromatic and gray. There were clouds and they were gray. They were the same color as the ground. It's something that you'll never, never ever forget. It makes you realize that we're truly living on a uh, planet that's so raging. It drew me closer to my maker. Volcanoes don't have to explode to be lethal. Some are less violent, but no less deadly. At the eastern tip of Java, Indonesia, is the active volcano of Kawaijin. Dr. Clive Oppenheimer travels the world, measuring volcanic gas emissions to help predict eruptions. And this volcano is unlike any other volcano in the world.